Welcome to episode 135 of the Clarity Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly, and today we're going to talk about the real ROI of relationships with a little help from our friend, New York Times bestseller, Donald Miller. We're making our way through the fog of life, and Clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. Okay, so maybe the intro line was a little bit of a bait and switch, but not completely. As you know, Donald Miller was a guest on the show a while back. We'll link that up so you can check it out. It was a great interview. Incredibly insightful and intelligent person. He's helped me a lot in my business career. It was great to have him on the podcast. But this clip is what I'm talking about when I say a little help from Donald Miller. Really, it was right before the COVID shutdown happened. I got to go to Nashville and spend the day with Donald Miller and a really small group of people going through a class he calls Mission Statement Made Simple. And here's what Don said when I gave him the opportunity to say something to the people. So I'm here with Messaging Master. You already know who he is, Donald Miller. Hey. He loosely agreed to be on the podcast. I'm just saying that in public. But Don, you can say one thing to everybody. What do you want to encourage uh, the community to do? Well, I would just say this guy's great. It's been great spending a day with him. You get it any time, you definitely you should. Wow. I didn't expect that. That wasn't pre-rehearsed. Yeah. The answer to most questions is not a, a, an idea. It's a person. Wow. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, there you go. Pleasure. Good to meet you guys. Okay, so this element of the answer to most of your problems being it's not an idea, but it's usually a person. When he said that, it clicked to me all of a sudden that throughout my career and throughout my life, if there was something I couldn't get over or there was a barrier I couldn't break through or a blind spot that I had, typically it's not that I read a line in a book. It's that a person helped me through it or maybe a person even gave me a book and turned me on to the idea. I think a lot of us are always looking for that next great idea and we're looking for that next great line or that next great inspirational quote or post on Instagram. Look, I know I love inspirational posts. I make them. I read them. However, Typically, the answer to the problems that we have in the roadblocks is usually a person that is going to help us through that. Let me give you some examples. So as I think through my business career, I, I like to think of all of the interactions that I have and all of the moving around that I do, all the social media interactions that I have as collecting dots. And a friend of mine, his name's Eric Hinman. Check him out on Instagram. I was talking to him once and he brought up this concept and it really resonated with me. He said, well, I just go and I travel and I do these things and I collect these dots and at some point, the dots begin to connect and I see my way through the dots. And that kind of jives really easily with my position on the word clarity and clarity being perspective and perspective being like the you are here on the map. And these relationships that we gain and these things that we do become dots that really plot a route through the issues, the challenges, the things that we're trying to figure out in our lives and the, and the direction we're trying to go. So I have a couple of examples and a couple of stories that I'm going to tell of these significant relationships that led to other significant relationships that led to other significant relationships, mostly in my professional career. And I think that as I tell these stories, you're probably going to think of, you may already be thinking of a number of relationships in your life that have led to another relationship and another one that have landed you where you are today. So the first one I'm going to bring up. So I was introduced to a person named Dave Ramsey. I read a book called Entree Leadership, basically giving some of the special sauce of what made his organization run really well. And so he was having a conference in New York City. It was called Business Gets Personal. And so because I read that book, because somebody introduced me to Dave Ramsey, all of a sudden I went to this conference. This event had three keynote speakers. One was Dave Ramsey, whom I knew. The other one was a guy named Seth Godin, marketing guru, whom I know that many of you that listen to this podcast or see my content also know who he is. So I know him. And then there was a third person I never heard of, and his name was Gary Vaynerchuk. And I was introduced to Gary for the first time and his perspective on marketing and business and media and content creation and this new wave of communication blew my mind. And from that point on, I paid a lot of attention to Gary and his content. Move the ball forward. Then I went to an event at VaynerMedia, Gary's company, where you had to pay a lot of money to spend one day with his executive team and kind of in a group setting. And I just knew there was something to it. So I went to that event. Then I met some people who were on his his team. So the dots start to build. And so I met some of his creative directors and some of the other leaders 
on his team and just made some relationships. After that, I went to another event that he, Gary put on a live event called Agent 2021 in Miami, Florida. And because I knew those people I had met at the other one, I had someone to talk to when I got there. And so I was talking to them and someone else sat down and we started talking business and strategy. And I said, oh, well, what do you do? And he said, well, I'm the chief operating officer of VaynerMedia, the one and only James Orsini. And so James Orsini reached out about four weeks after that and said, hey, we are starting a program in the Vayner organization, and we want to get some alpha members into this program where we really come alongside the companies and we help grow and scale them. He said, I think you should apply. So I did. 90 people applied. They picked three companies. Our company was one of them. That program is now known as Vayner Mentors. So before you know it, I'm sitting in New York City with Gary, with his executive team, working on building an agency, transitioning my company from one product and service, which was auto reconditioning, into another product and service, which is now a marketing agency. And all of that came because I started to meet people. I went to events. I started to put pieces together. Let me give you another one. There's a, a gentleman named Lou Brego, who is the director of operations for a dealership group in Syracuse called Driver's Village. Well, he introduced me to somebody named Dale Pollock. And Dale Pollock, if you're in the auto industry, you already know who he is. If you're not in the auto industry, you know that Dale revolutionized the way people buy and sell and price cars because of the way he leveraged technology. Well, before you know it, I meet Dale, and then I begin to get into conversation with him about the industry, and he wrote a book that I attached to, started making a podcast. This very podcast started as a result of my relationship with Dale and understanding that his book was important. So I start, if you go way back to episodes one through 10, it's actually just a content series around Dale's book, Like I See It. Well, then Dale introduces me to some other dealers and he, he invites me to an event where I got to spend some time with another dealer named David Long. And David Long now introduces me to a whole new way of thinking, has become a great friend, and then introduces me to another dealer named Brian Benstock. Now, Brian Benstock, if you're paying attention to what I'm doing right now, is a key part of this event that I've been having, this live stream event I've been having during COVID called Automotive State of the Union. And now through my relationship with Brian Benstock, I've been able to introduce him to some other people that I know. And there's a lot of synergy and who knows where it's going to go next, but all the dots connect all very strategic parts and points in my career, in my life, these dots connected and the solution to the issues was actually these people. And so I think you could probably back up a little bit in your life and look at where you are now and realize like, well, where did I meet this person? Oh, I met them because of that person, met them for that person. And here's, here's the last one I'm going to tell. So when I first got into business, the first car dealership I had ever been in, I was in my very early 20s. I got a job as a service writer at a small Chevy dealership in Oswego, New York, where I live. Look it up. It's right on Lake Ontario. And it was Burrett Chevrolet. But Chris gave me a chance as a service writer. Never been in a dealership in my life. It was, he was really the first CEO business owner that I was ever close with. And so after a few months at the dealership, uh, I don't know, four months, I saw that there was an opportunity to start my own business. And I actually told him about it, even though it was a little awkward because he was my boss. And so Chris started me off in business. And then through there, the story, you know, over the last 17 years, started making mistakes and meeting people. And his introduction for me into the automotive world led to me understanding reconditioning, led to me getting more opportunity to grow that business. Many, 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 many relationships through there. And now here we are seven, 17 years later, the reconditioning business got acquired. I have this agency that I'm building and put my heart and soul into. I get to make content and connect with you. Now our agency is growing and we're building a new facility. And so I'm applying for a bank loan, right? We're doing a big project. And when you know it, our loan went before the, the board for approval. And guess who the chairman of the board is? Chris Burrett. So everything comes full circle. The ROI of relationship is far beyond anything that you can actually calculate at the moment. A lot of people try to make relationships because they're like, what's in it for me? Especially what's in it for me right now? But the reality is gathering relationship, investing in relationship always has a positive ROI and it's an ROI that constantly develops throughout your life. You know, I'm saying always, uh, maybe always is too absolute a word, but it has been true so many times in my life that I wanted to share it with you today as I'm thinking about it and going through this. So the ROI of relationship is more than you can calculate. The answer to your problems, where you're stuck, where you are right now is most often a person. And so I hope that I can be part of your journey. I hope that you're part of mine. I hope that you think through all the relationships that you've had in your life and see the truths in there and encourages you to reach out, build relationships, be kind, encourage one another. 
and let's move forward together collecting dots and finding our way through. You just gotta love songs.